Konnichiwa, this is the Shogunstein, and this is a book review of One Last Gasp by Andrew C. Piazza, and it is a unique combination of World War II story and horror. Reminded me a little bit, at least in the description of a book I read many years ago called The Keep, which is the only other sort of World War II horror book that I've ever read other than One Last Gasp, and that was many years ago. One Last Gasp was a book that kept popping up on my Facebook feed. As you know, you get these targeted ads on social media, and as someone that likes books, as someone that likes history, obviously they were able to uh, send me ads that matched uh, you know, what I uh, look at on Facebook. So I kept getting an uh, ad for... Um, this book. Now, as you know, if you're on, uh, you know, social media, you get a lot of these uh, pop-up ads, you know, these ads on your Facebook feed. And most of the time, I just, uh, you know, ignore it or just keep scrolling. But the plot on this, you know, seemed very interesting. Again, that sort of uh, mashup between historical fiction and horror, which is, uh, again, historical fiction and horror, two genres that I really enjoy but cannot think of many other books that combine the two. I recently read a book about uh, a fighter squadron in the Pacific during World War II. That was kind of a horror book also. I can't remember the name of that, though. So maybe that's three that I've read. So One Last Gasp takes place around the time of the Battle of the Bulge, which was the uh, Nazis' last offensive during World War II. And this um, book starts off as a, uh, you know, typical World War II novel with some very good historical detail. And it seems like it's going to be the, you know, sort of a standard, you know, historical fiction of about World War II. And then it takes a turn. And then the turn is going to be that horror aspect, which, again, is, is part Haunted House, part Lovecraft, Part, you know, monster movie, just a really unique, uh, well done story where there are characters that you really do care about. And, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers away here, but um, what makes a good book is when you care about characters and you care what does or does not happen to them. So, in addition to this having some great uh, horror elements, and some great historical fiction about World War II and the Battle of the, the Bulge elements. They have just some really good, interesting characters that you just, uh, you know, you, as you're reading, you want to know what happens to them and you hope bad things don't happen to them. Some of my favorite novels, like Lonesome Dove and the first three books of the Game of Thrones, what made those books so good was you really cared about those characters. And in the case of both Game of Thrones and um, Lonesome Dove, uh, bad things happened to some very good characters. And, uh, you know, it was really upsetting when, when you read because you really did care about them. So in One Last Gasp, I really did care about the, the main characters here and what happened to them all the way through the end. So again, this is a, a book that I had never heard of and it just kept popping up on my Facebook feed. And just from the description of it, I said, you know, why don't I give this a try? You know, on the Kindle, um, it was just a couple of a uh, couple of bucks. I'm not sure how much it would be in, in an actual book form, but the Kindle version was not that expensive. And uh, it, it was really good. So again, in the beginning, it's going to start off like a, a, a World War II novel. And that horror aspect... Um, will happen uh, a little later on. So if you're expecting the horror right away, that's not necessarily the, the, the case. So there's a little bit of a, a, a buildup before it takes that, that turn. So, uh, and again, that, that's not a negative thing because I enjoyed the, you know, the, the World War II novel aspect of this as well. Now, he has a prequel to the story called Flying Fortress, which is a short story about some events that are mentioned in the book that, you know, is, is presented in more detail. And it's a prequel, 
I would recommend, at least for me, I'm glad I read it after because it was really good, but it maybe, uh, you know, gives a lot away as opposed to if you read the book first and then when it makes that, you know, that, uh, that turn, it's a little more of a, a surprise. So I do recommend reading the prequel also, Flying Fortress, but I would read it after reading the actual book. So that way you can kind of follow along with what's going to happen as opposed to uh, if you read that prequel, you're going to kind of know where this story is, is going. So a lot of, uh, you know, twists and turns in the horror aspect of it, a lot of good historical detail in the World War II aspect of it, just overall a, a very uh, a, a great surprise. This is a book that I really hadn't heard of before other than the Facebook ads. And, you know, for again, it was just a couple dollars to download it. And I said, hey, let me give this a couple pages. And a couple of pages turned into uh, the whole book. So again, I would just say that if you're into the more of the horror aspect of the book, you got to give it a few pages before it gets to it. If you like me and you like both the horror and the historical aspect of it, you're just going to like the whole thing. But if you're going into it just, uh, you know, wanting a, a horror book, um, you got to give it a few few pages. And again, it, it reminds me of, of not, not that this was a World War II book, but another book that I really enjoyed that was sort of a historical fiction horror was the book The Terror that, uh, you know, took the, you know, uh, historical event of one of those, uh, you know, Northwest Passage um, expeditions that uh, didn't come back. And then, you know, it was turned into, uh, you know, a supernatural element to the uh, the story. And that is, um, again, it's that kind of formula here that I really enjoyed also. So not that the, the plots have anything similar, you know, the Terra and um, One Last Gasp, you know, they, they have nothing in terms of the historical events in common, but just the way that the authors both did a great job combining history and horror and just, you know, making these two genres really work and really work well. So check out One Last Gasp and then check out the short story, the prequel, Flying Fortress. And this would make a great um, miniseries or, you know, I don't want to say movie because a movie might rush it. But this is something that I really hope they turn into some sort of, you know, you know, maybe, you know, six episode series, uh, you know, on, on Netflix or uh, Amazon. So one last gasp, Andrew Piazza, uh, excellent book, just, uh, you know, good World War II book, good horror book, and then, you know, seamless in how he combined both genres. This is the Shogunstein out.